Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the Solving Two-Step Equations video. So, big thing is that you know how to solve one-step equations at this point in time. So I'm going to assume that you do, and that you know what inverse operations are, and that you know what the opposite operations are, which is the same thing as inverse operations, but that you know what that is, so that you know how to cancel things out. So, let's get into it. A um, couple big things we got to talk about. One, constants. We've mentioned it before. And the constant of i that does not change, but it's also the value that does not have a variable attached to it. So, for example, if you see something like this, this 2 here is the constant. A coefficient, coefficient is a number that is multiplied by the variable. So you already have this definition for coefficient. Yes, you do need to write it down again because uh, that's important. And so that's why we're having to write it down twice. And you know what the coefficient is? It's the number that's being multiplied by the variable. Now, we are going to be solving two-step equations. This little star note here, if you need to rewrite this bigger so you can see it, rewrite it bigger so that you can see it. And then, because that is the key here to solving two-step equations. You need to highlight it, highlight it, but make it so it's really easy for you to see because it's very important. For two-step equations, we always get rid of the constant first by doing addition and subtraction. So, two-step equations are where it takes, obviously, two steps to solve. Okay, our goal is still to get our variable by itself, and we still use inverse operations. So, none of the steps change from one-step equations. Now, you just have to do two of them. And the most important thing is we start by doing addition and subtraction first. Think of it as the opposite of order of operations. PEMDAS has always told you guys, has always told us, hey, we have to do our multiplication division before we do addition and subtraction, which is true, but now we don't. Okay, just for solving equations, now is where we always make sure we get rid of our addition and subtraction first, and then we start worrying about the multiplication and division. You technically can do your multiplication and division first. It just makes it much more complicated, much more difficult, and much more work, and I don't know about you guys, but I like to not have to do a ton of work, and I don't like to, have, I like to keep things as simple as possible. So looking at this first one right here, I, my goal is to get the n by itself, the variable, so I need to get rid of this plus 2, and I need to get rid of this multiply by 3. So we still follow the same rules as whatever we do on one side, the equal sign we have to do on the other. So I want to get rid of the constant first by doing addition and subtraction. So I've got to get rid of this 2 first before I worry about the 3. So the way I get rid of plus 2 is I do the opposite, which is subtract 2. And whatever I do on one side of the equal sign, I still do on the other side. 2 minus 2 is 0. goes away. I still got to bring down the 3n, and that is equal to 9. Now you'll notice we're now back to a one-step equation. This should look exactly like our one-step equation that we've already learned how to solve. So that's what we're going to do. So I have 3 times n. So I need to do the opposite, which is division, divide both sides by 3, and I get n equals 3, and I'm done. Now I can plug that back in and see if I did it correct. So that's 3 times 3 plus 2. 9 plus 2 is 11. Oh, look, it's supposed to equal 11, so I did it correct. And that's just a nice quick check to make sure that you did it right. So, looking at the second one here in the top, I'm going to look at this one in the top right here. Now, again, here's my equal sign, so that's where I'm going to draw my line. The variable is on the left side, so I need to worry about getting rid of this 38,000, and then i got to worry about the, the 600 over here. Now, remember, the signs always follow the number, so this is really, we're going to just look at this as a negative 600 times m, and we're just going to look at the 38,000 as a positive 38,000. So the way I would get rid of a positive 38,000 is I would subtract 38,000 from both sides. I'm subtracting from both sides because 38,000 minus 38,000 is 0, which is why it goes away. I bring down the sign with the coefficient and the variable. So this is negative 600m equals, I got to do 18,800 minus 38,000. The big thing is that I know my answer is going to be negative because I'm taking away more than what I have. 
I also need to make sure that I actually flip the numbers around when I do my subtraction. So I'm going to do my work off to the side here. 18,800. Because we always got to subtract the larger number from the small, I mean the smaller number from the larger number. So that we can actually be accurate. So I got to borrow. So that's going to give me two. I got to borrow here to get 17, 9, 1. So 19,200. And it is negative. 19,200. Okay. So, I'm going to erase that work to size space. Again, we're following the exact same steps. We're trying to get the variable by itself by doing the inverse operation or the opposite. So now I look at what I have left. I have negative 600 times m. So this is multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by negative 600 on both sides. Those cancel, and I have my variable by itself. And then I would actually have to do the division of negative 600. I'm sorry, negative 19,200 divided by 600. I am going to just use a calculator real quick. And I get 32. And I know it's positive 32 because a negative divided by a negative is positive. I want you guys to try these last two real quick. Try these bottom two, see how you do. So pause, if you haven't paused it already, pause it, try them out on your own. At least try one of them on your own. Okay, so here's my equal sign. I'm going to draw a line there. 2a minus 3 equals negative 5. Got to get the a by itself. So that means I got to get rid of the minus 3 first by doing the opposite, which is plus 3. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Bring down my 2a. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. They cancel. That equals negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Then I have 2a equals negative 2. So 2 times something equals negative 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get a equals negative 1. Over here, let me do what color am I? I'll do red. So over here, I have x over negative 2 plus 5 equals 21. So I have to subtract 5 from both sides, and those go away. Bring down my variable, and that division with it equals 21 minus 5 is 16. Now, this is x divided by 2, by, I'm sorry, divided by negative 2. So, in order to cancel out division, I need to do multiplication. So, I'm going to multiply by negative 2 to make those go away. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So I should get x equals negative 32. And again, I can always plug this in to check my answers. All right. Now, you're going to have word problems with this as well. So with the word problems, we have to actually write the equation first, and then we're going to have to solve from there. So let's, read, let's go through and write our equation and then solve. A dog sled driver added more gear to the sled, doubling its weight. Whenever you double something, you multiply it by 2. So that's, that's key right there, doubling its weight. You know, probably going to multiply by 2. I'm just going to write that there. This felt too heavy. So the driver removed 20 pounds to reach the final weight. That's C equal 180. Write and solve an equation to find the sled's original weight. So the sled's original weight, I'm going to use as W. That's the original weight. He doubled it, so he multiplied it by 2. Realized it was too heavy, removed 20 pounds, and he ended up at 180. By kind of going through this, we were able to basically write out the equation itself. I knew remove means we're taking away, which is minus 20. When it says final, we know that that's going to be pretty much our equal where we ended up. So there's my equation. Now I can solve. So do the opposite. Always get rid of the constant first. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. Always get rid of the constant first. Always do our addition and subtraction first. So we double the weight. And so 2w equals 200. So if I divide by 2, the original weight was 100 pounds. So then if the original weight was 100, he doubled it, making it 200. Felt too heavy. Removed 20 pounds to get it back down to 180. And then 
that's where you ended up. Try this next one, pause it, try it, see how you do. The Wilsons have triplets and another child who is 10 years old. The sum of the ages of their children is 37. Okay, how old are the triplets? So the Wilsons have triplets and another child who is 10 years old. The sum is 37. So I know if I take the triplets and however old they are, so let's use X for that. I know there's three of them. I multiply that by their age and I add that with the 10 year old. I'm going to have a sum, I'm going to have a total of 37 years. There's my equation. Now I can subtract 10 from both sides and start solving. There's my line, right? That goes away. I have 3x equals 27. I'm going to rewrite that over here just because I ran out of room. So now I got to divide by 3. x equals 9. So that means each triplet is 9 years old. So I have 3 of them. 3 times 9 is 27. And then I add that with the 10 year old, and that gives me a total of 37 years. Okay. That's it. So things to remember. Big thing. Always do addition and subtraction first. That's the big thing to remember. Always cancel out the constant first. So yes, you already have it written down once. I want you to write it down again because that's how important it is. It's probably the number one mistake people make. So we always do the addition and subtraction first. Get rid of the constant first. Okay, so get rid of the constant first. And then you worry about doing your division and your multiplication. So please make sure you do the two independent practice problems. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching. Gradius out.